If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and try to answer this question on your own first before listening on. We will begin to solve this question by considering Gauss's law. And Gauss's law tells us that a constant multiplied by the total electric flux is going to equal the amount of charge enclosed by a so-called Gaussian surface. The diagram draws this box-like Gaussian surface, and we are told that inside of that surface is an enclosed charge equal to positive 24 times this constant epsilon naught. So we already know, in other words, this term right here. We can go ahead and plug in the 24 epsilon in for this enclosed charge. And then the unit of that charge is coulombs. Now, if we study the equation carefully, we can see that epsilon appears on both sides. So if we divide both sides of the equation by epsilon, it's going to cancel out. And that's going to tell us that the total electric flux is going to equal positive 24. Now, of course, we're not done with the problem. We need to examine what we mean by the total electric flux. Now, the definition of electric flux tells us to integrate the dot product between the electric field and what is known as an area vector. And you'll sometimes see this integral have a closed loop around it. That just indicates that we have to take this integral for all surfaces of our Gaussian surface. And since this is a box, we can see that there are actually six surfaces in total for this Gaussian surface. There are the two sides, the top and the bottom, and then the front and the back. And so here is the expression for the electric flux, and again that's going to equal positive 24. And by the way, the unit of electric flux will simply be the unit of electric field multiplied by the unit of area. So we would have newtons per coulomb multiplied by meters squared. The challenging part of this question will be to evaluate the electric flux for each of the six surfaces of this box-like Gaussian surface. And we're going to begin by evaluating the electric flux for two of those surfaces. We're going to be looking at the right face of the box, which we will outline in blue right there, and then we'll also look at the left face of the box. So again, our goal will be to determine the electric flux through those two faces, and then later we'll do the other faces of this Gaussian surface. So let's take a look at the right face first. And before we start plugging in numbers, what we want to do is draw the area vector. Now area vectors, by convention, point away from the interior of the Gaussian surface. So we would have to point our area vector in the rightward direction because that would be pointing away from the interior of this box. And we can label that dA. Now to determine the electric flux for that particular surface, we're going to integrate the dot product of the electric field and that dA vector. Let's start with the electric field. We are given this rather complex expression for the electric field. And so what we'll do is go ahead and plug it in for this electric field in our flux equation. And so there is that expression. Now what we want to do is figure out the x value for this particular surface that we're examining right now. And we can see that the x value would be the value of x2. And if we look at the given information, x2 had a value of 4 meters. So we're going to be plugging in 4 for x in this particular case. Now 2 times 4 is 8, added to 10 will be 18. So we're going to replace this 10 plus 2x with a value of 18. The next thing that we want to do is examine this dA vector. Now we go back to the picture and we note that it points to the right. Well, because it's pointing to the right, that would be along the positive x direction. And so what we can say is that the dA vector, because it's pointing in the positive x direction, in unit vector notation would be dA i hat, since i hat is considered the positive x direction. So we're going to actually replace this dA vector with this term right here. We can then distribute this dA i hat to all three terms inside the brackets. Now, when distributing in unit vectors, the i hat, when multiplied to the i hat, will effectively cancel. And so you'd be left with 18 times dA. And then the i hat times the j hat will actually be zero. That just comes from the laws of multiplying unit vectors. Similarly, the i hat times 
this k hat will also become zero. So those terms effectively drop out and we're left with this right here for the electric flux. Now 18 is a constant so we can factor it out of the integral and then the integral of dA is just the area, A. So we have 18 multiplied by the area. We simply need to find the area of this rectangular face here. And so we have to examine carefully the length of this rectangle as well as its width. The width of the rectangle will be determined by the value of y2, since the width is projecting in the same direction as the positive y-axis. The value of y2 was given to us as one meter, so that's one meter right there. And then the length will be the distance between z1 and z2. Well, z1 is one meter and z2 is three meters, so that length right there will simply be two meters. And that simply means that the area of the rectangle is two times one, which of course is two. So we're going to have 18 multiplied by 2, which comes out to 36. And this is an electric flux, so we use that unit of newtons per coulomb times meter squared. So that's the electric flux through the right face of this Gaussian surface. Let's turn next to the left face. Now for the left face, we have to draw that dA vector, which again points away from the interior of this box-like Gaussian surface, so it's going to point to the left. The fact that dA points to the left means that we can write it in unit vector notation as dA times negative i hat. Negative, of course, because it's pointing to the left. We come over and we look at the electric flux equation, which tells us again to take the integral of the dot product between the electric field and dA. We'll go ahead and plug in the fancy expression for the electric field given in the question, as well as the substitution for the dA vector that we just stated. Now this time the x value for the electric field equation is different. It, this surface of the box has an x value of x1, which is actually 1 meter. So we'll be plugging in 1 for x. 1 times 2 is 2, plus 10 is 12. So we're actually going to put a 12 in front of the i hat term. We can then go ahead and distribute the dA to all three terms. Once again, following the rules of multiplying unit vectors, when we multiply this negative i hat dA times 12 i hat, the i hats will cancel out and that's going to leave us with a negative 12 dA. And then when we multiply the i hat to the j hat, those become zero and the i hat times the k hat also becomes zero. So this remains our expression for the electric flux. We can pull out the negative 12 and then the integral of dA is just going to be the area again. Now the area of that face of the surface is the same as before. If you recall, we found that area to be two. So we'll multiply this negative 12 by two and we get negative 24 newtons per coulomb meter squared. So this is the flux through the left face. And then for both of the faces, we can simply add the two values together and that's gonna give us the total flux through the right and left face. And when we do that, we can see that that flux is going to be 12 newtons per coulomb meter squared. So we're about one third of the way through the problem because we've done the right and the left faces of the Gaussian surface. We're gonna next perhaps do the top and the bottom. Let's perhaps start with the top of the Gaussian surface. Once again, the electric flux is going to be the same equation. The electric field times the dA vector. For the top, the dA vector would be pointing upward. And so we could say in unit vector notation that dA is equal to dA, and then that would be j hat. And then we'll go ahead and fill in the expression for the electric field. We could then distribute the dA j hat to all three terms in the brackets. Remember, j hat times i hat is zero, j hat times k hat also is zero, and then j hat times j hat, those j hats will just cancel out. So if we do that carefully, we're gonna end up with negative three dA. And the negative three can be factored out, and then the integral of dA is the area. Now the area of the top surface is going to be this dimension, which we determined earlier to be two. And then we need the length of this dimension right here. That's from x1 to x2. x1 has a value of one and x2 has a value of four. So four minus one is gonna make that dimension three long. So the area of the top face would be this length times this width, three times two is six. That's gonna be the area. So that's gonna end up being negative three multiplied by that area. So we get negative 18. That's the electric 
flux through the top surface of the cube. Let's move to the bottom surface next. Notice for the bottom surface, the dA vector would be pointing downward because it has to point away from the interior of the Gaussian surface. That means in unit vector notation, this dA is going to be dA times negative j hat. So we'll fill that in for dA as well as the electric field expression. Let's distribute the dA negative j hat into the brackets. And so when we do that, the i hats and k hats will go to zero and we'll be left with, now be careful here, you have a negative j hat times this negative three j hat. That's gonna become a positive three and then dA. So then we have three times the integral of dA, which is three times the area. We already found the area to be six. So it'd be three times six, which gives us positive 18 newtons per coulomb meters squared. So the total flux to the top and the bottom surface is acquired by adding the flux to the bottom and the flux to the top. And of course, if we add those together, we get zero. So there is zero net flux through the top and bottom together. Finally, let's turn to the front and the back surfaces. For the front, the dA vector would be pointing in this direction. For the back surface, it points in that direction. And so for the front, we could say that the dA vector is equal to dA. And notice that vector is projecting in the positive z direction. So this would be positive k hat. So let's go to the flux. We'll distribute the dA k hat. The i hat j hat will cancel. And we'll be left with positive bz times dA. Now for the value of z, since we're looking at the front face of this Gaussian surface, that value of z would be z2. And z2 had a value of three. So we actually have the integral of three times b dA. We'll factor out the three. We'll have, actually we could factor the three b out because b is a constant. And then we'll have the integral of dA, which is just the area. So we're gonna need the area of this front face of the cube. Remember from x1 to x2 was a distance of three. And then the value of y2 was one. So that means the area of the front surface is three times one, which is three. So we have three B times three, and we get nine B. So that's the front surface flux. Let's go to the rear surface. For the rear surface, the dA vector points in the negative Z direction. So using unit vector notation, we could say it's dA times negative K hat. So we'll actually just fill in a negative sign in front of the k hat over here. We'll then distribute that dA negative k hat. So we'll have the integral, now be careful here, negative times a positive will be a negative bz times dA. The value of z for the rear surface is z1, which was stated in the question to be one. So we'll have the integral of negative one b dA. We'll factor out the negative b the integral of dA is the area, and the area of that rear surface is the same as the front surface, so that's three. So that's gonna be negative three times B. And then we add the flux of the rear with the flux of the front, and we're gonna get positive six B. So finally, we can return to the original Gauss's law equation that we had been working on earlier. We now have this total electric flux because all we have to do is add these three fluxes together. So we have essentially 6b plus zero plus 12. That's gonna be the total flux in newtons per coulomb meters squared. And that's going to equal 24 newtons per coulomb meters squared. Well, basically those units will just cancel out. And so we'll have 6b plus 12 equals 24. And then it's just a little bit of algebra. 6b has to equal 12. And therefore b finally is equal to two. And this is the correct answer. But of course, we actually need to go back and find the unit. So to understand that, we look at this part of the electric field where it says BZ and then K hat, which just gives us the direction of it. We know because it's an electric field, it has to come out to Newtons per coulomb. Well, Z is measured in meters. So we have B multiplied by a meter equals a Newton per coulomb. So to solve that for B, we just divide by meters. So we would have Newtons per coulomb meter. That would be the correct unit for our value of B. And indeed, we now have the final answer.